Hey everybody, so this week on our um, homeschool art project, I've got a cool um, weaving technique that I actually is gonna um, turn into a basket. So I'll show you some examples. This is the first one. So it's hard to tell when you can't see it up close, but this is actually made from strips of fab, uh, sorry, paper. <laughs> you can do it out of fabric too, but it's made from strips of paper that we've actually taken and weaved, and then we turn it into a cone. So it works really good for flowers. You can put um, snacks, treats, uh, you can put a gift in it even. You can, um, this little flap is closed right now, but um, it could also go over it the other way and seal a package. So it's kind of a cool technique. You can make it into something that would be like a Mayday basket with handles. Maybe you wanted to put a present on your neighbor's door or give somebody a snack or cookies. This is another one. So weaving is a very old art. Um, normally it's done with fibers and traditionally it would have been done with wool. So that's one of our oldest materials that it would have been um, made with. So what you're gonna need is two sheets of paper. You can also use magazines, construction paper, um, any scrapbooking paper that you might have. They just need to be two sheets. This is one, the other one is cut, but I'll show you that in a minute. And some scissors. Probably something to mark with, probably something to color with. You might want colored pencils. And then you're gonna need some glue. So that can be in the form of Elmer's glue. A glue stick um, works great. This is actually just Mod Podge and I put it in this container. So, all right, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take your um, full sheet of paper and you are going to, it's a rectangle. For most people, your uh, paper is a rectangle. If your paper happens to be a square already, then you don't need to do this step. So for the rectangle paper, you're going to take one of the corners. It's going to actually, this line right here is going to fold exactly to meet this line on the opposite side just like so. So what that's going to do, I have to lay it down to do it to get it right, is it's gonna be giving you a square. So there's that, right? Okay, so this extra right here, we are going to cut it off. And after that, what we're going to have is a square. So uh, take a minute to fold your paper, fold it really nicely. You wanna make a nice um, shape. Take your time and then uh, go ahead and cut off the strip, okay? So you're going to have an extra sheet of paper, this little guy right here, this rectangle that you're gonna use. So keep that. Then your square sheet of paper that you've got, you're gonna take that, fold it in half. So you now have a fold, which is this line right here. So this crease is the fold, which is also the center of the paper. And then you have your two edges, okay? This is important. So you've got the two edges that open and you've got your center. So from your center line, you are going to take your marking utensil and you're going to draw a series of lines. Now they can be straight lines or they can be, um, they can kind of have a curve to them. Whatever they are, you just need to copy it. So it needs to be the same throughout the piece. So I'm gonna do it with the straight lines just so you see what I'm talking about. And you're gonna stop about an inch away from the edge. So I know you're thinking, what, what does that even mean? I will show you. And you're gonna wanna make them all match. So not uh, down to, you know, a microscopic level. So you're gonna, I've got the folded edge here. Okay, folded edge here. So that's the fold. Lines running up, but not going all the way to the open edge, right? 
okay? That's super important. So don't make them go all the way to the edge. They're just gonna stop about an inch or a half an inch shy, okay? So once you've got that, you're actually gonna take your scissors and you are going to cut these lines. All the way across. So we've got little kind of strips. Okay. Ta da! All right, so now you've got a what looks like a, a square, right, with all these strips. So you can turn it this way, you've got a cool shape, right? You've actually probably seen an art project where you take and make this into a lantern, which is kind of cool, right? Do, 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 do. Okay. So if you want, you can unfold the crease in the middle slightly so it doesn't have that memory as much. Okay. So now we've got that. Okay. So your extra sheet of paper. Do, 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 do. You can measure about how wide your strips that you cut are but you don't have to. You could actually make these any size you want. So I am just gonna cut. And the smaller you make your strips, the more weaving you're going to have to do. So you may wanna do them really thin, you may wanna do them wide, you could actually have them be different or you could have them be very symmetrical to each other. It's your choice. So, I've got all my strips, okay? Okay, so the basic foundation of weaving is over, under, over, under, over, under. So what that means is you are going to go over, or sorry, under the first piece, which is this over the next piece, under, over, under, over. So what happens when we look at that from the side, try to do this so you can see it, is you've got these two layers, right? So you're gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under with your strips. So it's gonna look like this under the first one, over the second one, under and over. Okay, and you're gonna repeat that all the way across. This is a great way to learn weaving and understand weaving. And once you get this down, it's much easier to apply this to fabric or thread. So it's hard to tell from there, but it goes over and under each piece. Now I've got a tab on the edge here and then a tab on the edge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna glue just with a teeny dot. Doesn't need to be a lot, so you don't need to use that much glue. A little tiny dot and then glue it down and then you may need to flip it over. You may also need to protect the surface that you're working on so you do not get glue on the work surface because that might make your parents not very happy if you do, okay? So now you're gonna repeat. So my first one is going over, so the tab's on the outside. So then I'm gonna start the opposite. the first one my, my paper is going to go over. Remember each piece just goes over, under, over, under, over, under. So there's the second one. Hard to tell, but it's going over, under, over, under. So what I'm gonna do is actually color on a strip to show you. Now you do have some choices. You could color these before you weave them, 
or you can you can color them after it's kind of up to you what you want to do if you're already using different colors of paper then you're going to get a different result so there's the strip that i just colored because i think it's going to show up better and then we're going to go it's easier to weave it of course laying flat okay so oops, there we go so this one as you can see is fitting right under there so that's the over under over under and then the glue is just gonna get glue on this side right here and back so glue the tabs down and that really helps when we fold it into the basket to glue the tabs down okay keeps everything in place and then your basket doesn't come apart okay so you're gonna do the whole thing till it's all filled in with paper, right? So this is till you can't fit any more paper. So um, you're gonna use your extra paper to cut more strips. Remember, because this paper is as wide as this, right? So just cut more additional strips off of there. You're gonna do that until your whole thing is filled. So make sure you glue all your tabs down on both sides, front and back, flip it over. And it should feel pretty secure, should feel pretty um, stable after you get it. I just discovered there's one side I didn't glue. So check all your tabs. That's really gonna help. So you'll have a grid and you can space the strips out as far as you want. You can create little openings if you want. You're the artist, so you do whatever you would like. Then after you do that, you can go in and color this with colored pencil, with marker. If you have a heavier paper, you may even be able to use watercolor. Um, so, you know, it's up to you. You create um, your artwork based on what you want to do, what you have resources for. So once that's all done and that's all filled in, um, you got one? Oh, I did. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to show you how you fold it. Okay, so we're going to just imagine that this is the woven piece, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half, point to point, right? So it's going to make a triangle when you fold it. Okay. Then what you're going to do is open it. Now I'm going to draw a line so you can see what I'm doing. So from folding it in the corner, we've got the diagonal line, okay, that goes down the center. Okay, it's folded. So then what I'm going to do, this part's a little tricky, this line right here is going to meet the middle line. So what it's going to look like You can do this a couple different ways. You can start to bring it in and then roll it. You have a cone shape. You can then staple or glue it right there and you've got your shape. That feels tricky to you and you just can't get it because sometimes it's a little hard. You can actually fold that line like i said this line into the center line almost like we're making a kite shape okay then you're going to open it and then you can just attach that corner to that so then it makes more of a kind of a teardrop shape unicorn horn hat fancy hat and then again you can glue it if you glue it just make sure that you start at the bottom and then put a couple drops and then glue it up here and you may have to hold it in its shape to get it to stay but this will be all your cool weaving you've got a couple different options you can actually fold the back down such as this one so this one had the back folded down so it's got kind of points on the side or you can just um leave it like this one 
and you could still attach your um, handles. And then if you want to give it to someone kind of as a gift, you can always fold this down over the top and make it kind of like a package, full basket package. Okay, so it kind of looks like um, something that would hold flowers or um, if you go on a nature walk or something like that and you want to pick up leaves or twigs and things like that, this is a perfect thing to do. If you can't quite get the bottom to close the way you like, you can always fold the end up like so, making a nice little seal. The other thing that this looks like is if you ever have a snow cone, it's given to you in something just like this, a paper cone. So that is our basket folding technique, or basket weaving technique, and then we'll turn it into sort of the May Day looking basket. And that's our, that's our class. Um, feel free to express yourself with design, uh, color patterns. Um, if you want to use any of the textures that we have learned in some of our textures classes with um, weaving marks on the paper or um, something that looks spiky or smooth, um, all of those different textures that we learned would actually work really well. And sometimes you can just make marks. So that's actually a term that I use in some of my fabric dyeing classes called mark making. And it's just, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just a cool mark. That's what some of the designs on here were just little circles with dots inside. And then I made some texture on the weaving part. So it was very abstract. And then this one also had some different lines and textures and designs. Maybe the person you're making it for um, has a favorite color. You can also use, I think I said, sheets of magazine to weave inside. You can do two different colors. And you can also do this with fabric. So you can just have a fun time choosing your different options and having fun with this. Make sure that you save the one that you do for the class so we can show it as part of our art stroll. Um, and if you do make another one, maybe you can give it away as a present, okay? Um, I hope you guys have a nice week and I'll see you later, okay? Bye.